So the question is, do you become a great dancer or do you become a great dancer in the mind first? Welcome to uh, another Facebook Live. I'm just here waiting for a lesson and I thought I'd have a quick chat to you all because, well, you guys are all awesome and I wanna say thank you for being part of the community. Give me a little like or share below and let me know where you're from. But I think what gets overlooked a lot in the dancing world is how important your mindset and the way you visualize yourself and use the faculties of your mind to create the results you want in your dancing. And what do I mean by this? It's very easy to turn up to a dance class and to think that that's going to make you better. Essentially, that's like going to the doctor and getting a pill and you know, apparently that's gonna make you healthy. So what we've got to understand first is that for the results to change in your dancing, the starting point is in the way you think about you and your dancing. And there's a great quote by Van Gogh is that he says, I uh, dream my painting and then I paint my dream. And so if you think about your dancing, I want you to imagine the best version of yourself. What does that look like? Who does that look like? How do you see yourself in that role? What are you actually doing? What do you wear? What do you walk like? What do you even talk like? You know, do you have perfect balance? And the reason this is so important is because this is what Alison and myself did way, way back when we first started dancing. You know, I had the two left feet. I was not a talented dancer at all. In fact, my coach said, you're a donkey. <laughs> and I learned a lesson really early though from a, a sort of mindset coach that I had. And this coach told me, he said, Vaughn, you need to act as if. And what this means, if you understand what uh, a self-image is, a self-image is how we see ourselves in relation to the world. Well, he said, you need to act as if, meaning dress, walk, and act the part of the person you want to become. That goes for business, that goes for life, that goes for dancing. So I started looking at how the best dancers behaved. I watched them at competitions, I observed them, I saw how they would walk, I saw how they carried themselves, all right? You probably can relate to that, right? Uh, let me know what you think about this, by the way, as, as I'm going through this. And you would see, I would see them dressing a certain way, holding their posture a certain way, and, and when they would walk onto the floor, it just had this air and this grace and this freaking confidence. I was like, oh man, I want that. Can you relate to that? And so I started to do that. I started to understand, you gotta act as if. You have to see it in your mind's eye first before it becomes a reality. There's another saying, you know, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. And this is so true because when I had those two left feet, I had the inner drive to wanna to dance, I had the motivation to wanna to get better like I'm sure you do. But there was a gap, there was something missing, like I needed a really big goal to go after. So when I was about 19 years old, my partner Allison and I, we set, like again, we were beginner dancers, we set a goal to become representatives for Australia in 10 dance. And for us, that was so big because we just, we're in the beginner class, we we're doing one teenage Latin class a week. And you know, who are we to set that goal? But we we're like, how cool would that be? We played the what if game, what if we actually did it? Wouldn't that be amazing? We get to travel the world and get to, uh, to do all these cool things. And imagine the type of dancer we'd become at that level. And so we set that goal and we gave ourselves 10 years to do it. Now here's the thing, you can set a goal and not achieve it. And the reason for that is, well, there's a few reasons and we'll talk about those maybe in upcoming videos and let me know if you like these type of videos for your dancing. But you can set the goal, but you'll need the beliefs behind the actions uh, that you need to take to, to make that goal a reality. However, you need to start acting as if you already hold that goal in your hand, meaning reverse engineer it. So if you wanna be a certain type of dancer, if you wanna be known as a certain type of dancer, if you wanna look a certain way that could be confident on the floor, could be never making a mistake, could be always on time, could be having perfect balance, perfect posture, could be world-class dancing, whatever that is for you, the very first starting point is acting as if you already have that. And then you reverse engineer, what are the skills I need to create to do that? 
What are the practices I need to deploy? What are the mindsets that I need to have? Do I need to take more lessons? Do I need to take different type of lessons? Do I need to cross train? You know, we had to do ballet and we did all sorts of lifestyle changes and so health changes to, to make this happen because to become a world-class dancer, well, you couldn't just turn up to the studio twice a week. That's hope and pray, right? What we had to do was fundamentally make our entire life obsessive about dancing. You know, during my lunch, I'd be sitting there eating a salad and I'd be like watching YouTube. I'd be studying the way, I wouldn't be watching the girls, although the girls are pretty. I'd be watching the guys, right? Like, how do they move their hand? Like watching their fingers, I was like, how do they do that? Because my hands were like this, right? So <laughs> I'm like, how do I do this? So then I'd go in the studio and I'd, I'd just like practice my freaking fingers or hand for like hours right? And then I'd, I would work systematically through my body and I would be watching uh, all these dancers and modeling their behavior. And very quickly, my results started to shift. Because I was doing the lessons and I had the right coach and I had a great partner and we had a lot of struggle points in our, <laughs> believe me, we had some times we wanted to quit. Like it was, it was not the easiest partnership, but it was always worth it because we were tr acting as if and going towards this goal. And we could see it. We could see it. But our bodies couldn't do it, right? So we could see what we wanted to do. But there's a massive gap, right? And here's the thing. You never arrive with your dancing. You're always getting better. Always getting better. Even our coach, Anne Glee, she's one of the most respected ballroom coaches in the world. This woman has hundreds of couples, all the top level. She's booked out a year in advance, right, in London. If you ever go to London, try to get a lesson with Anne. She's amazing. She's a beautiful woman too. But even she said, I said, Anne, are you, like, are you better now? Like, can you ever stop learning? And true to most masters, she said, I never stop learning. In fact, I wish I could compete now because I'm better now than when I was dancing, you know, 20 years ago. And at that point, she was a world champion, right? I was like, isn't that fascinating? So we never arrive. So here's the thing. If you never arrive, well, what are we going for? You're going for a certain, I would say, in terms of a goal, a certain arrival point. Meaning, if you're off balance, one thing I was is I never had balance. So I wanted to have world-class posture and world-class balance. I never wanted to fall over. I wanted to feel like I was in total control all of the time. Is that something maybe you want? So I started, to, that was for me, that's something you can achieve, right? That's something you can arrive at for sure. Um, and then you can work backward. But one thing with dancing is it's a double-edged sword. You'll always be getting better constantly. So my takeaway for you today in this, is find out what is the outcome you're trying to achieve here. What are you, what are you looking for? You know, what are you aiming for? It doesn't have to be the top in the world. In fact, you know, my coach always said from the beginning, Vaughn, there's only one Blackpool champion every year, one. That means over a period of 10 years, there's only 10 out of the tens of thousands of dancers. So what I realized then is I went, cool, well, that could be me if I wanted it, maybe. But that's not the point. Who am I gonna become? when I get to the level I want to get to. You see, that's what I'm asking for you. Now, Terry, thanks for sharing this. True to all levels, fab to have top dancers say it out loud. Commit to the best you can be. I absolutely agree. You know, I, I, I think it's also relative. It's really important. You know, I've got, I've got dancers here who are young, seven, eight years old. I've got a 73 year old. I've got a 70 year old Marie who is absolutely crushing it. She came like in the semifinals at the Blackpool Pro-Am last year. She's so awesome, right? I push both of them just as hard, but to the level they want to go to. Because I realized a long time ago, I actually can, as a, as a qualified professional, I, I can put people off their dancing by pushing them to where I think they should go. So what is very important for you is to go to the level that you want, find out what that is for you, make sure you've got a partner that supports that, and then tell your coach and let them help you get to that level. You should go for it because you want it, you should go for it because it's something that you desire and you can see yourself getting there. And then that gap you can close over time. And with videos like this and other things, you'll be able to get that next bit of information to put to work. But above all, whatever you do, do it with joy, do it with passion, do it because you love it. And I want to thank you for tuning in today and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to bringing you a few more in the, in the future. And remember to paint the picture of the dancer you want to be in your mind.